What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the best I'm looking at so far for UFC 305 Duplessis versus Adesanya. First things first, please hit the like button for me, subscribe if you are new or if you just haven't yet. Turn on the notifications so you know when I put out my videos when we go live on Wednesday nights or if we do anything crazy on Saturdays before the show or before, I'm sorry, before the fights. Leave some comments below how well or bad you did. You will see shortly that I did very bad on this last card, UFC Vegas 95. Um, also, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Picks. I put out my early picks, bets, UFC cheat sheets, betting cheat sheets, all that good stuff. Uh, become, become a core member for $5.99 a month, or you can join for free. I put out free content there as well. But yeah, uh, last night, luckily for me, I wasn't able to watch literally any of UFC Vegas 95, and I'm glad I didn't because after looking back at all my bets and the results, no bueno. But uh, let's just go through that real quick and get that out of the way, just like a Band-Aid. Here they are, all my bets. Um, I did bet Ches Chelsea Chandler, yes, um, but that was earlier in the week, which is why I got a very bad line there. Um, Gregorio, I was weirdly confident all week. Uh, looked like he was going to win that fight. And then he uh, got subbed. So that hurt right there because I would have had a KO and his. So that's two bets I would have won if he didn't make a boneheaded, um, you know, mistake. Um, yeah. And then all these other L's are just bad. Uh, Barlow didn't get the KO. Barlow barely won that fight. Uh, didn't look all that great. Carl Williams didn't feel like shooting takedowns. Uh, Alan, Alan, Alan Carr didn't feel like shooting takedowns either, I guess. Um, yeah, just one of those weird fights, uh, lower level fights, lower level, you get lower level results. And I know moving forward, if there's ever a card like this, I'm just gonna very bet very small, maybe like one spot, one bet, call it a day. If that, if not, then I'm not gonna bet it. Um, I learned my lesson. This uh card cost me my eight winning streak in a row, not to say that. It wasn't my fault because it was. I bet too much stuff. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, we move forward. Luckily for this card, there's a lot more bets that are very um, interesting, if you want to say. I do like a lot more on this card. So let's get right to it. And I'm not going to go over all those fights, like I said, because I did not watch the fights. Uh, first fight we got, though, it's going to be Stuart uh, Nickel, or Nickel versus Jesus Aguilar. And uh, Nickel... UFC debut, he's making his UFC debut. Uh, local guy from Australia. He's a solid wrestler and grappler. He's got good takedowns. His striking is just meh. Um, he does want to shoot for takedowns. Um, he is tough. You know, he's durable. He's got pretty good cardio. Like I said, good, basically a wrestler grappler guy is going to use his striking to set up those takedowns. Um, Jesus Aguilar, though, he's a very good grappler. He's got a very good, very good submissions, especially guillotines. His striking is also just okay. He does have some power in his hands if he does land. Pretty decent takedowns, uh, pretty decent wrestling too, but he's got good scrambles off the mat if he does get taken down. His takedown defense isn't super great, but um, we'll see what happens in this fight. I do think this fight will probably play out on the mat, but um, yeah, this is a close fight, and I see that Nickel, or Nickel is um, he's a pretty wide favorite for a UFC debut. And I'm not saying Jesus Aguilar is very good or anything, but I mean, he's not a bum either. I think he's pretty decent. And this is a tough matchup for anybody making their debut. So um, I'm going to go with the dog. I'm going to go with Aguilar, actually. I think this will fight will this fight will play out close. Um, I think Aguilar has the finishing upside, especially with the submissions on the feet. I mean, maybe you can even say Aguilar has finishing upside because we've seen him knock out um, Shannon Ross, not to say. That's uh, hard to do, if you want to say, but it was impressive. And then uh, he was able to beat uh, Matus. So close fight. I'm just going to go with the dog. I think the line's a little wide here. And, you know, maybe it's like 50, 52 percent, 48 percent, either guy, what you think. So I do think this fight will play out close. But give me the dog in Jesus. Next one's going to be Kenan. Ooh, there we go. Where did it go? Kenan Song. Versus Ricky Glenn. And yeah, we have, let's see. Get our song, Powerful Striker. He can be a little hittable at times. Sometimes he does slow down as the fight goes on. He kind of can be a little low volume. But once he hits and connects, he can knock you out. He's got that one punch knockout power. Good left hooks. 
Um, he's not really going to wrestle or grapple. He's got solid takedown defense. He is durable too. Um, yeah. And Ricky Glenn, he's, you know, he's a well-rounded guy, solid striker. He likes to stay at range. He's good. Does have decent power. If he lands good cardio, uh, lately the, the fights just haven't been very good for, uh, Ricky. He's got knocked out against Drew Dober. He got knocked out against Chris Yagos, which was crazy to me. Um, so not having the greatest of runs, maybe his chin is a little dusty, especially after these two big knockouts. Uh, Judobers, you know, Judober can crack. So he's fighting another power puncher up a weight class at 170, and he's normally 155. So for me, I'm going to go with Song. Um, would it shock me if Ricky Glenn somehow squeaks by and survives and gets a decision win? No. But I don't think he's going to be able to. I think Song will eventually connect and get that KO. First or second round, I'm going to say. Um, I, and I also think Song can win a decision, too. But um, not to say that he can't. But I think if if it does go to decision, it's probably because Ricky Glenn survives and maybe just outpoints him on the feet or maybe get some grappling going. But I don't think so. I think Song will get that knockout. First, second round. Next one, Tom Nolan versus Alex Reyes. Um, interesting fight if you want to say nolan's a solid striker he's got very good pop power he likes to get into little brawls at from time to time um he does have a n pretty decent chin i know he got uh knocked out against nicholas moda uh, but takedown defense isn't all that great but he's very dangerous very he likes spinning elbows spinning uh, flying knees all that good stuff and he's very tall and long for the division alex reyes <clears throat> you know okay fighter okay striking okay grappling striking defense isn't all that great his last fight was 10 months ago before that it was six years almost seven years so this guy's not active he just got knocked out 10 months ago against charlie campbell who's also dangerous i think tom nolan is just as dangerous at least um 13 year age gap yeah i mean tom nolan is first round knockout I mean, I'm going to keep that this one short and sweet. Alex Reyes is not, should not be in the UFC. So he just take probably getting his contract out and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably won't be seeing any more of Alex Reyes. But for the time being, Tom Nolan, come on down. Let's get your knockout in the first round. That's it. Next one's going to be Jack Jenkins versus Herbert Burns. And... Jenkins is well-rounded guy. He's got very good wrestling, a uh, good top control when he gets it um, on top. Good takedowns, good leg kicks. He likes to push forward. He's got um, good, he's durable usually. He got injured in his last fight um, when he was trying to um, cushion his blow from a takedown attempt or something like that. I think he like uh, dislocated his elbow or something like that from a takedown. But um, he, he's, like I said, normally durable. He's got good cardio. So this will be his first fight back from that injury. Um, but he is fighting uh, Herbert Burns, who is taking this fight on short notice, which is insane to me. But he's a very dangerous grappler for round one. And that's it. Like, you know, he fades so hard after round after one round. Um, his striking isn't all that great. Like I said, he does have good grappling, good submissions early. But, you know, he's losing by KO in the first or second round in these last three fights. He's 36 years old. He's taking this fight on short notice. I mean... You got to go Jack Jenkins here. I'm going to say first or second round finish, um, probably KO. Because he's just going to get tired and he's going to give up and the ref's going to stop it. So give me Jack Jenkins first or second round KO for this one. Interesting fight here. Casey O'Neill versus Luana Santos. We just saw Luana a few weeks ago, actually, and she looked good in her fight. But Casey O'Neill, solid striker. She throws tons of volume on the feet. She can be a little hittable at times, show some damage on her face. Um, she can wrestle. We haven't seen wrestling in a while since her knee injury. And since her knee injury, she is um she's 0-2. At least I don't I was thinking I couldn't remember if she had the knee injury before this fight or not. I think it was after, which is why there was a year gap. Um, but like I said, she can wrestle, but we haven't seen it too often since the knee injury. And she's very tough. She's got good cardio. Um, she can be submitted kind of easily when she is taken down, which kind of worries me in this fight for her. But Luana Santos is taking this fight on short notice, somewhat short notice. It's not like super short notice, maybe three weeks or so. 
but she's very well rounded. She's got good uh, judo, uh, decent striking. She's, uh, we saw some good grappling in her last fight against Maria Agapova. But, you know, I will say this Maria Agapova's ground game is negative three. Um, so Casey's, Casey's ground game will be better than that. But yeah, this fight is very close. Um, also, Santos does throw a good volume on the feet, and she's pretty durable. Um, man, th- man, if Luana wasn't short notice, I would be more confident in this pick because I do favor Santos ever so slightly because she can get the takedowns on Casey O'Neill. I think the striking may be a slight favorite or favor uh, Casey O'Neill just because of the volume. I think it's a little bit more technical, but I think if Luana can get this fight to the mat, I think it's, it's, it's night and day on the mat. So the short notice worries me. I'm going to pick Santos still, but it's going to be close. And I feel like if Santos does not get a finish in the first or second round, probably by sub, um, third round is going to be dicey. I just don't know if her cardio is going to be there at, as much. Uh, we'll see with the weigh-ins as well. Maybe she's going to be a little bit heavier. She is, like I said, taking this fight on short notice. It's over, you know, in Australia. So it's always a big flight to go. So it plays a lot of factors. But, I mean, if we're going to go just on paper, if I wasn't putting any of those in to my equation, I would pick Luana here. Probably more so like a medium confidence. But I think this is just a low confidence pick for me. But give me Santos to win by uh, first or second round submission. I think she can win a decision. But round three is going to be, I think, Casey O'Neill if it gets even gets there. So maybe you can do Casey O'Neill plus three and a half. But I would be a little bit worried that Santos gets that sub to play that. So something to think about. But I think I might just stay away from this fight altogether because I could see a finish. I could see a decision. I could see Casey winning. I could see Santos winning. Eh. One of those. Next one's going to be Josh Kulabau versus Ricardo Hamos. Uh, la, la, la. Let's see. Kulabau, he's a good striker. He's got decent power in his hands. He likes to push forward, be a little aggressive. Uh, I wouldn't say he's a junkyard dog, but I would say he's a dog. He likes to, uh, He has some decent grappling he can use in his back pocket. Um, he can be a little hittable on the feet sometimes. In his last fight, it was a very close fight. He did get dropped a couple times, which is a little worrisome. But he did come back and um, made this fight really close. And... Um, You know, some people thought Danny didn't win. Some people, you know, that's how close it was. No robbery or anything, but very close fight. Um, Hamos, though, he's well-rounded. Explosive striking. He's got good uh, submissions as well. Decent takedowns. Um, The only thing with his takedowns, he leaves his neck out there, and he gets submitted all the time. His last two fights, he got guillotined, and that's not a good look. He's got very bad fight IQ. Um, But... Yeah, I see some people picking uh, Hamos here, and I don't blame you, but I just can't trust the fight IQ. I think, you know, Hamos can be winning all fight and then just make a stupid decision and Josh can get a rear naked choke or maybe knock him out or even a guillotine. So I'm going to go with Josh here to win. Um, I could see a late finish, but I'm going to go by decision. Um Like I said, either way, if this fight does go to decision, it's probably going to be in Josh's hand, uh, favor, but... I think Josh has a good chance to get his finish too, but Hamos is also dangerous too. But I, I trust Kulabau's uh, durability in this fight. I think he can keep the fight standing. And I think he's the better striker. So I'm going to go with Kulabau, like I said. I'll say by decision, third round decision, something like that. Wouldn't, But it wouldn't shock me if Hamos makes a bad mistake in the first round. Feature prelim is going to be Junior Taffa versus Vulture Walker. Battle of the baby bros, if you want to say. Um, but Tafa, he's a powerful striker. He's got quick strikes for a heavyweight. He's pretty durable. He's got decent cardio takedown defense. You know, it's not awful. It's not great. Um, he does do better when he is up against the cage. He, d- he does have a pretty good takedown defense when that happens, but if he's out in the open, he does get taken down for it rather easily. Um, he doesn't really have the greatest get up game, but he does try to work himself up. He's not going to stay, stay there like a dead you know, piece of meat or whatever, or dead fish or what you want to say. But uh, Walker, he's, he's a wrestler. He's going to try to go for takedowns. I don't think his striking is all that great. He does have decent power. Um, he does try to get this fight to the mat. I don't think he's all that great. So this is a lower level heavyweight fight against two baby bros. Um, I'm going to go with the better striker, and that's Tafa. I think Walker might have success early in the first, maybe second. 
But if this fight gets into the over one and a half round range or more, um, I'm gonna I would lean Junior all day with the striking. I think Walker showed in his last fight against Lucas Bretsky, which is not a good look because you can obviously take down Bretsky and dominate him, and he wasn't able to, and he lost a decision. So, um, you know, Junior Top is fighting Marcos. I think that was even on super super short notice. You know, Parker Porter, I would say, is maybe even a little bit better than Walker, and he beat him there. So, give me Junior Tafa by knockout. I'm going to say second round knockout. Um, maybe if this fight gets in the third round, third round knockout. But I think the first round, I think Walker will try to get some takedowns, and they'll probably sneak into the second round. But I think Junior has the better hands. I think he can get the damage. And Walker, if he does get takedowns, I don't think he's going to do too much with it. So the judges don't like that. So top of by KO. Main card, Jing Liang Li versus Carlos Prates. And this is going to be a very, very good fight. I love this main card, by the way. I think it's one of the better main cards that we've seen in a while. But Li, first things first, he hasn't fought in like almost two years. It was against Daniel Rodriguez. It was a split decision, very close. And then he got, um, oh, that was this fight. Okay. So he's been a little inactive. He's a little up there in age. He's 36 years old now, but he's a solid striker. He's got good power in his hands. He's durable. He's never been knocked out. He's been submitted. Um, but he got, he's got a big head. He's, so, <laughs> but he's a striker. And he can wrestle at times, but he's just going to probably strike with you. Um, Carl Pro, Carl. Carlos Prates, though, he's a very good striker. He's very explosive, very dangerous, good step in knees. Um, sometimes he keeps his hands a little bit low. He can be a little hittable. He's been knocked out a few times in his career, but he does have good kicks. Um, like I said, very good step in knees. He's got the step in knee knockout against Charles Radke. Um, good good win against Trevin Giles. Uh, this is a little step up in competition for Prates, but... I'm going with Prates. I think he's more dangerous. I think he can land the better strikes. I think he can stay safe. Um, if there is any grappling in this fight, I, I would probably see it from Prates, but I think this fight's going to probably play out in the feet. And I just think eventually Prates is going to find a knockout shot here, um, whether it's to the body, maybe a club and sub of some sorts. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many submissions he has on his record. I can't remember. He's only got three. It's been finished five times. So. Maybe you can look at the under in this spot. I don't think it will be a bad spot to look at, but I really like Prates. I think he's very dangerous, and I just don't know where Lee's at in his career now. Like I said, he hasn't fought in almost two years. He's 36 years old. Uh, maybe a little bit of rust is going to happen in this fight. Uh, Prates has been fighting pretty actively the last you know three fights. So give me Prates to win. I'm going to say second or third round knockout, though, um, or finish, whatever you want to do. Next one going to be Taito Ivasa versus Jarzino Rosenstruck. And yeah, we all know who Ty is. Let's see if he brings back the good old uh, Shui, if you want to say, because we haven't seen that in a while. But he's a powerful striker. He likes to brawl. He's a brawler. Uh, pretty durable. He doesn't really go down with one shot. He does take a lot of shots, but eventually his chin's looking not looking too great. Uh, he got KO'd by Gon. Now it's more so to the body. Sergey KO, um, Volkov, and Typer. He's been finished in his last four fights. It's not a good look, but um, yeah, he's just he wants to go in there, brawl it out, and try to get you try to get a knockout. And Rose Rosenstruck, though, powerful striker. He, sometimes he can be a little low volume, but uh, lately he showed he's showing some good volume, which I do like. Takedown defense is good. He doesn't worry about any of that. Um, and he's durable. I think he's only been knocked out by the more powerful punchers in the division like Naganyu and stuff like that. But um, I love Rosenstruck in this fight. I think he wins this. I know he's a little older, but this is heavyweight. It doesn't really matter all that much unless you're maybe like 45 years old. But other than that, I mean, Rosenstruck is one of the better power punchers in the heavyweight division. I like his technical striking, his jab. Um, and I think he can get this one done. I think he's, I think Ty is going to rush in a little bit too aggressively, and Rosenstruck is probably going to land that counter and knock him out. So Rosenstruck by knockout, I'm going to say first or second round. I think that's the play. And I'm like I said, I'm pretty confident Rosenstruck gets this done. Next one's going to be Mateus Gamrot versus Dan Hooker. 
And Gamera, as we all know, very, very good chain wrestler. All he normally does is shoot takedowns and try to take you down. He always pushes forward. He uses his striking to set up the takedowns. Um, but he wrestles. He's got amazing cardio for it. He's durable. He does. He can get dropped from time to time, but he gets right back up and goes back to wrestling. Hooker, very good kickboxer. He's got. He stays at range very well. He's got power in his hands. He's got good leg kicks. Sometimes he can be a little bit hittable if he tries to make it more so a brawl rather than a technical kickboxing fight. Um, decent takedown defense. He can be taken down. He does have a pretty good get-up game. Um, but, yeah, this is a close fight, actually, and I can really see it go either way. Line, you can maybe say it's a little bit wide. But um, I think Gamrot's going to be able to get this one done and probably by 29-28 decision. I don't see him finishing Dan Hooker here. Um, if there is a finish, I could probably see Dan Hooker being the guy to finish Gamera, but Gamera, man, he's durable, uh, or at least tough. If you want to say like, if he gets knocked down, he gets up and you just don't finish Gamera. So, um, just going to go with the wrestler who I think can put the more, more pressure on Dan Hooker in the later rounds. And maybe I don't want to say melt him, but those takedowns will come easier as the fight goes on. And I think Hooker is going to have to land a knockout to get this one done. So. Give me Gamrot to win by decision. Like I said, don't hate anybody taking Hooker on the on this one. But I just think the wrestling is going to be too much. It's just his style, the style of wrestling. <clears throat> Co-main, it's going to be Kai Kara France versus Steve Ursig. Uh, Kai Kara hasn't fought in a little over a year. Very close fight against Amir. Kind of thought he won, but it is what it is. But he's a very good boxer, good striker, very technical. He's got good counters, good power in his hands. Durable, uh, pretty good takedown defense, uh, good submission defense as well. If he is taken down, he can be controlled, though. He is a little small. Um, that's why he, more, more times than not, he can be controlled, but he's always safe when he's down, especially if he gets his like back taken or anything like that. But uh, he's going to try to keep it on the feet and box with you. But Ursig, he's a very good grappler. He's got good submissions. He's got good takedowns. His striking is pretty good, too, as we've seen. He's got good counters, good power. Sometimes he can be a little hittable on the feet, but he's you know, he's, he's going to keep coming forward. He, he, he did put on a very good uh, fight against Pantoja, very close. Uh, just the later rounds, he was just getting taken down a little bit too much. But, yeah, this is another one that might could play out a little bit closer than some people would want. But uh, I'm going to go with Steve Ersig. I think he can, he's going to be the bigger guy. I think he can get the wrestling going. I think he can get the grappling going as well. Um, on the feet, you know, I do. maybe you can favor Kai here. But, I mean, Steve's got good boxing, man. So I think it'll be close on the feet. I just favor Ersig with the grappling and the wrestling. And I think he can um, control this fight wherever he wants it to go. So give me... Ursig to win. I'm going to say by decision. I think both guys are durable. I think they're tough. I do I do like the overs in this fight. Um, so I'll look at that. But for now, give me Ursig to win by decision. And then we got the main event. The main event. It's going to be a good one. Drickus Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. But Duplessis is a well-rounded guy. He's got power on the feet. He can be a little uh, loopy with his striking. He's not the most technical guy. Um, he can be a little hittable too as well, um, but he always pushes forward. He's very tough. He's very durable. He's got good takedowns, good good uh, ground and pound. He's got good submissions. He's got good grappling. The only thing is he's just not a technical striker, but he does make up for that by pushing forward and being you know gritty and trying to get this fight to the mat if need be. Adesanya, we all know who he is, super technical kickboxer. He's got good hands, good kicks. Um, good counters as well he's durable as well good cardio um but he can wrestle and grapple if need be but i don't think he's going to in this fight i think he should keep it on the feet so yeah this is a this is an interesting fight i can't I, i'll be honest i went back and forth a million times but i'm gonna go with israel i don't know why my gut thinks he's gonna get this one done it's gonna be a very close fight I think it'll be 48, 47 one way or another, maybe even split. I don't see a finish. I would look at the overs in this fight. But um, yeah, I think Israel gets it done ever so slightly, 48, 47. I think he wins like, you know, like round one and one four and 
something or something like that. Cause I do think Duplessis will win two rounds, but I think the striking is going to look better on the Israel side. I think it's going to land some very good shots. Um, maybe do some damage on Drickus's face, which is going to sway the judges one way or another. And, uh, but if Duplessis can get that wrestling and grappling going, uh, make this a dirty fight. Don't make it a clean kickboxing fight, which he usually never does. So it'll be a close one, but I just think the more impactful shots are going to come from Israel. And I think it's just going to be a little bit too much for Drickus as the fight goes on. So Israel by decision. That's what I'm going to look at. But all right, guys, that is it. That's all 12 fights for UFC 305. Thank you for watching. Uh, please hit the like button on your way out as well. And don't forget... Wednesday night, defend your units. Our guy Cody from Blood Money MMA Bets is coming back. So uh, definitely tune in Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to give you our uh, picks and bets as well together. Um, yeah, it's about it. That's all I got for you. Hope everybody enjoys the fights this weekend. This is a very short video for me, which I'm kind of proud of myself to do that because I'm trying to get a little bit quicker videos. So definitely um tune in wednesday night again and we'll see you then until next time